evangelism sometimes can be really complicated, not because the process is hard, but because actually it's a spiritual activity. It's not a natural one. And so there's things that go on in the spiritual world that we don't see, but we run into all the time. And so it's helpful for us as we're doing evangelism to every once in a while light a theological match. Uh, to kind of light up the room and see what's going on in the spiritual world. What are some of the realities that are happening while I'm sharing the gospel? And during this week, we, we took a look at at least four basic principles in theology that really help us know what's going on in the room when I'm sharing the gospel with someone. And, and the first one of those that I think we need to have a perspective on is, is the theology of the harvest. We see in the parable of the sower and the farmer and the soils that the farmer sowed, sowed seed everywhere and it fell on four different soils and only one of those soils was good. The other soils had weeds or rocks and they grew up and then quickly died or the seed was taken away by the enemy. And, and we often experience this reality in our lives where someone accepts Christ and they fall away or we've been witnessing to them over and over and over again and they don't respond. They're like hard soil. And we can think that there's something wrong with us. The, the problems with our technique or something like that. When in reality, Jesus told us this is what's going to happen. This is how things work in the spiritual realm. And I think that that can be a great encouragement to us. That we don't get discouraged when we run into the bad soil, but actually we're so encouraged that when the seed falls on good soil, it actually produces a crop 30, 60, 100 times what was sown. It's a, an amazing reality that can keep us from being discouraged when we share evangelism, when we share the gospel. The second uh, theological principle that I think is important for us to have is a theology of man. One of the things that we learned is that man, the scripture says that man is dead and he's blind. That he can't see, that he can't understand these things unless the Spirit of God speaks into him. Scripture says that no one seeks God unless God first initiates with them. And it's helpful for us to know that we really need to rely on the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to, to breathe life into people and that when they don't understand what I'm saying, there's a reason why. It's because they're dead and they're blind. And I shouldn't get frustrated with them. I should pray that God would make things clear that He would bring them to life and cause them to see. The third <clears throat> spiritual match or, or theological match that we wanted to light was the reality that all the time in evangelism, there's more going on in the spiritual realm than I can see. That all the time the forces of evil are pushing back against me when I'm sharing the gospel with somebody. And yet at the same time, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are actively engaged in the process. So it's important to know I'm not alone in the room because I've got opposition. But also it's important to know that I'm not alone because I have someone, three, who are working with me, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then the other thing that's helpful for us to always have in mind is this, the theology of the end. That hell is very real and it's very awful. And that heaven is very real and incredibly wonderful. And both of them are forever. They don't stop, they keep going for forever. And so I'm not inviting someone to join our club or to join our church. I'm in asking them to step from eternal hell into eternal heaven. And so I do it with a different kind of passion. Not one that forces it on them or tells them they're going to hell, but internally I say, this is a person and this is eternity at stake for them. And it changes the passion with which I share the gospel with people.